Hi everyone, David Mala here, and today we're going to go through part two of the series on random forest classification on interesting data sets. So basically for this series right here, we're using the uh, taxpayer information. So I'll show it to you again here. I already showed it to you in the previous video, but this is the data set. It's basically a bunch of people's information with that's been scrubbed so it doesn't have their names, it doesn't have their social security numbers or any identifiable information in it. It just has household income, household debt level, married, college graduate, you know, cars, how many cars they have in their family, did they file in 2017, 2016, or 2015, and then their choice of political party. So that's the data set. Now, where we left off in the last one is we did a random forest classification, but remember there were some questions we wanted to answer. So let's go back and look at those. The questions were, what are the values of the predictors or the attributes that we used in the, in the data set. And then the second one was, can we make this more accurate? Now the accuracy thing we're going to actually do in the next video, part three, I'm going to save that for last. But the attributes are very important and we're going to look at them in this video. So what we're going to do is we're going to start off right here. And let me move this down so you can see this better. All right, so basically what we're going to do is we're going to check the importance of the factors first and so there's this piece of code right here where we bring in the random force function and then we have in there inside of there the uh, column that we're interested in which is our political party from the last one but it's pol party and then what we have is this little similar sign right here and then we have all of the other columns right here with a plus sign in between each of them. Then we have a comma and we have our data set. So data equals data two. So if we run this, this is what happens. It'll give you your random forest based on that into output forest. And then what we do is we can either print it here or we can just go and click on this. Either one will do it. And if we do this, there it is right there. So what this does it's calling this random force function on those variables or on those uh, columns or attributes and it tells you right here it's a classification you know random forest 500 trees so that's the number of trees that we have decision trees going off of this and the number of a the, the number of variables tried at each split is three okay so the out-of-box estimate of the error rate is 35.66. Remember we were at what? 65% accuracy, so that's about right. And this is the class error for these, okay? Now next, what we want to do is we want to determine the importance of each predictor, right? So what we're going to do is we're going to use the importance function right here, and we're going to put that into the random forest. So watch this. If you use this right here, based on the output.forest. See that? We created output.forest right here. And this is all in that right there. Okay. And so now we put that in here. Now watch what happens. We run this. And that gives us our mean decrease in GI and I. Now what that means is the higher the value, right? The higher the value, the greater the importance. See, I wrote that right here for you. Okay, so when we look here, we have them in the order that we put them in here, HHI, H HDL, you know, married, college grads, all that, right? And so what we have here is, it's not necessarily in order of rank, so when you look at these, it depends. So like you see an 87 here, and then you see a 41 here, and then a 41 here. So it's in the order we put them in here, but what you need to look at is the number, the higher the number is, the more important it is towards the attribute determining the classification. In this case, we're looking at the classification of their political party, right? So we want to know, are they Republican? Are they Democrat? Are they independent? So what we do is we look at this and we can say, okay, we know that household income and household debt level, that's the first two, are extremely important. They have very high values, these two right here. Let's highlight them correctly here and uh, married is 24 college grads is 41 that's more important than married and the average household age is right here at 87 that's very high and then we have the number of cars that they have that they own in the household and then at the lower end 
it's still important. Anything above like five is going to be still be important. Um, but the thing is, they're lowest of all these values for whether they filed tax returns in 2017, 2016, or 2015. So these are less important. These two here are very important. They really determine, apparently, whether somebody's Republican, Democrat, or Independent, or whether they vote that way. So when we look at this, we've done this. We've done the uh, random forest right here, right? Now let's just plot this. We didn't plot this yet. So we're plotting what we just created right here. All we're doing is using the plot function on it, right? So let's do that. And there we go. So this is the error levels of the output forest. Okay. And as you can see, the error level overall is remember we saw it earlier of point or three thirty five point six six percent which is right here okay in the black right there all right now next if we do this and we do a table based on that so we could do a table on data to pull party which is the column with those values and the number of rows from data to let's do that let's just see what we get we have this so nose we have sixty six basically 66.53% no's and 33.5% yes. So the results from this are that we have the predictors importance now, right? We have them right here. We know which ones are more important. We could leave some of these out next time and say, well, let's run it without the filed in, you know, 2017, 16, and 15 years and run it like that. Um, we could also decide, let's just run it with the first four, right? A household income, household debt level, married and college grads. We could test that out and see which ones work better. So we've answered the uh, predictor's importance here, right? Which ones are more important, which ones are less important. They're all important because they're all values of above five or so. But some are far more important than others. They have more determination on, you know, the prediction here. Now, but we're left with another question still. We didn't answer this question yet. So the last question is, can we be more accurate with our data? Can we? So right now we're at 65% still, right? Can we get that up to be more accurate? Now, obviously we saw earlier when we saw, we looked at our predicted data and we looked to determine, you know, were they uh, Democrat, Republican, or independent? And then we looked at the previous data that had it already in there before we scrubbed it out. And we saw that we were actually 100% accurate on who was Democrat not. That's what we did. We could have done it with Republicans. We could have done it with independents. It doesn't matter. So in the next video, we're going to go into actually increasing our accuracy over 70%. So right now we're at 65%. With this data set, now keep in mind, every data set is different. So one data set might be able to get you up to 90% or 95% accurate, depending on the data that's in it. In this case, we're going from 65 to over 70. And you're going to see that in the next video but it's still very accurate for this and it's a pretty good determination of you know determining the classification of what how people vote so it's pretty interesting stuff thanks again for watching i hope you found this helpful and interesting please take a moment to subscribe like and comment and i'll see you in the next video thanks